This is how I made a replica of a leaf-shaped arrowhead from the Neolithic period in Europe. Small arrowheads of this style were part of the technological and cultural shift that transformed European hunter-foragers into farmers. Changes in stone tool technology like this were just a small part of the broader changes to people's technology, diet, architecture, and societies. In this video, I make a Neolithic leaf arrowhead and discuss the context of this type of tool in Neolithic archaeology. I select a flake of Grand Presseny flint from France. This material is high quality, eye-catching, and was highly used by people from the Neolithic and older time periods. This flake is fairly thick and will require me striking off thinning flakes with direct percussion tools before I can do finer work with pressure flaking. I use both a hammer stone and a piece of antler called a billet to thin this piece down. The Neolithic Revolution spread across Europe, with many of the technologies and cultural ideas originating in the Near East. This included agriculture, animal husbandry, more permanent styles of housing and sedentism, increased use of pottery, and more. The spread of Neolithic technology in the archaeological record reflects both the spread of these ideas to local people and the spread of other populations settling new regions. The forests covering Europe had to be cleared to make room for farm fields. One of the landmarks of Neolithic technology was the polished stone axe which was more durable and far better suited for cutting down forests than the flake axes of the Mesolithic period. The timber they cleared would have been perfect for building their homes. These timber houses were rectangular and made with timber posts, and made to last years rather than seasons. Neolithic people made their homes in homesteads, hamlets, and even sizable villages. As time went on, these villages became more nucleated contained larger structures, and were even encircled by defensive palisades. Leaf-shaped arrowheads spread with Neolithic culture across Europe, into West Asia, and into Africa. Depending on the region, they date to the early to middle Neolithic period. Since I am replicating those out of Western Europe in mind, it would be early Neolithic. There is a good deal of variation in the shape of leaf-shaped arrowheads. They can be squat, slender, have pointed or rounded bases, ovicular, or tight-shaped. Regionally, some of these shapes of leaf arrowheads tend to be more common than others. Leaf arrowheads tend to be 30 millimeters or shorter when they are found in domestic contexts. In some cases, they are even longer than 50 millimeters, such as in burial contexts in Britain. Early Neolithic assemblages with leaf arrowheads also contain other stone tools, such as scrapers, single-piece flint sickles, polished flint axe heads, blades and blade cores, and flake tools. While leaf-shaped arrowheads would have been used for hunting, this activity was much less common during the Neolithic than the preceding Mesolithic period. Domesticated animals, and domesticate foods as a whole, replace much of the caloric intake hunting once provided. Leaf-shaped arrowheads had another function, for use in interpersonal conflict. Violence was becoming more common in Western Europe with the rise of agriculture, as surplus resources and an increase in populations made disputes more common. Now the piece is thin, and most of what is left is shaping and contouring. This is done with pressure flaking, a technique that involves pressing a tool into the stone and down to release a small but controlled flake. I'm using a composite pressure flaker made from deer antler. A solid piece of antler or bone works just as well for this task. Domesticated animals decreased the role hunting played in the lives of Neolithic people. They kept cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs during the time period leaf arrowheads were in use. While useful for their meat, these animals were also important for the milk they produced, as well as their hides and wool. 
domesticated plant foods would have played an even larger role in the diets of Neolithic people. They grew several varieties of wheat, barley, and legumes, such as peas. The ability to cook these foods in pottery allowed Neolithic people to get the most nutrients possible out of these plant foods. These changes in diet weren't instant and didn't completely replace wild foods. It was common in the early and middle Neolithic for people to supplement their diets with wild game and foraged foods. Neolithic timber houses were made using new styles of construction, and in places like Britain and Ireland, they were like nothing made previously. They were built using post construction, although planks were sometimes used as well. Normal sized houses tended to be 10 to 12 meters long and 5 to 7 meters wide. The peak of the roof was formed by central posts and supported by shorter posts on the walls. However, Large houses are found in Britain and Ireland that are between 18 and 24 meters long and up to 11 meters wide. The skilled woodworkers of the Neolithic were capable of creating very wide roofs for these buildings. There is a good deal of variation with these structures, some having bowed ends or different length to width ratios. While the support for these buildings was done with oak timbers, the gaps between these posts would have been filled with wattle and daub. This is termed post-entrenched construction and would have made for a very strong and stable structure. Additionally, these buildings had internal dividers to separate the interior into different spaces. Domestic changes weren't the only kind of cultural revolution that occurred during the Neolithic. It was during this time that in places like France, southern Britain, and more western Europe that people began creating elaborate mortuary markers and burials as symbolic markers of community. They created mortuary houses of timber and stone, which were enclosed in long earthen mounds. These mortuary sites became distinct monuments on the landscape. In places like Normandy, mortuary constructions were different, such as stone burial chambers with round mounds, which were accessed by long corridors. These narrow passages allowed Neolithic people to access these tombs repeatedly and bury their dead more than one time. The style of burial is known as passage graves. In Britain and Ireland, People were building stone constructed cysts with funnel shaped entrances and circular covering mounds, known as portal tombs. These were not the only style of tombs, as similar but different styles are being made in Scotland and Northern Ireland. My replica of a Neolithic leaf shaped arrowhead is almost complete. It is nearly the shape that I want it, so now I just have to do the finishing touches. Using a piece of antler with a more narrow tip, I make sure the edge is regular. Once this is complete, I remove a final series of flakes to make the edge sharp and the tip fine and pointed. The Neolithic Revolution brought many changes to the lives of people living in Western Europe. Not only were there new forms of tools introduced, like this leaf arrowhead, but changes to diet, housing, lifestyle, mortuary practices, and ways of thinking. The introduction of agriculture was a big shift for how people engaged with both their food and their environment as a whole. <laughs>